Greetings AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here, and finally, here we find ourselves. We are on the brink of talking about topic 10.15. Why is that significant? Well, this is the last topic in the AP Calc CED. Uh, that's if you follow the CED in order and do Unit 9 followed by Unit 10. But we are looking at our very final uh, topic and our final really conglomeration of ideas that tie up all of this information about Taylor series. And the title of 10.14, as you can see here on this slide, is Representing Functions as Power Series. So now we're going to get to take a look at some series that don't maybe lend themselves very well for you to find the Power Series or the Taylor McLaurin series in a systematic way so we can find these other approaches in order to write them as such. And so we're gonna start off with our first example, which focuses on the idea of a geometric power series centered at zero. And the directions very simply are to find the series for f of x equal four over x plus two centered at zero and state its interval of convergence. And I don't want you to be confused by the usage of the word power series. Basically, this problem is the same as asking you to find a Maclaurin series because we know that we're centered at zero because a, a Maclaurin series is just one of the many different power series that you can encounter. Now, of course, there is a rigorous way to do this problem. You could take several derivatives of four over x plus two, evaluate each of those at zero and see if you can develop a pattern as to figure out what the actual series would look like. And I am not recommending that because that's definitely going to be a lot more work than, than the solution that I'm going to share with you. And the fact that I've told you that this is a geometric power series should help quite a bit. Now, if you don't have that information, you need to at least look at this and recognize it as a constant over a sum expression with x to the first, because that's going to help you decide that really a geometric series, we know it's sum. We, we've been taught that an infinite geometric series, I'm going to write this here, an infinite geo series do a little abbreviating here we know a piece of information and that is the sum is equal to a which we commonly refer to as the first term all divided by one minus r which is the common ratio we know that to be true well what this problem is saying is that hey i am the function f of x therefore i am equivalent to that sum. I am the a over 1 minus r, essentially. And I want you to figure out, well, what would the series look like that produces my sum, 4 over x plus 2? Now, keep in mind, we know that this sum is only true as long as the value of r is between 1 and negative 1. And that would be uh, exclusively. We don't include one or negative one as, as being uh, reliable here for this series formula to exist. So it's strictly less than in both cases. So what are we going to do about this? Well, your goal is to take this f of x, 4 over x plus 2, and you want it to look like a over 1 minus r. Well, how do we do that, you might ask? Well, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. First of all, we're not going to change the letter x to an r, but we're going to treat the x as the variable, just as we kind of treat r maybe in this denominator as a variable expression, perhaps. And so the very first thing that you can do is just simply swap the order of the 2 and the x. Not a problem. Just reverse them. Commutative property is alive and well. But you probably also realize that there should be a subtraction in that denominator. So we need to make that happen as well. Well, to make that happen, instead of adding a positive x, you're going to do something a little bit clever here, and you'll subtract a negative x. I know that seems a little bit strange, but that's the way that you have to approach. And then finally, there seems to be one other issue that isn't quite 
quite at work here, and that's the fact that this first constant in the denominator should be a 1. And right now, it looks like it's a 2 to me. So you can simply fix that if you divide the numerator and the denominator both by a 2. Dividing it by a 2 is going to create a 1 in that spot. Well, it's also going to provide a 2 in the numerator. Of course, the 1 in the denominator where we need it. But don't forget, you also have to divide that negative x by a 2, at which point you would get negative x over 2. And once you have gotten to this stage, you have the form that you want. You have the form. It says that your value of a would be 2, and the value of r would be this negative x over 2. And once you know those two things, you can start to do um, a lot of cool things, like you could write the open form of the series. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, the open form of the series would just simply be f of x equaling, well, a is going to serve as your first term, so that's going to be a 2. And then you would just simply add to that whatever a times the r is. Okay, well, if I add a, which is 2, multiplied by my r, that would be 2 times negative x over 2, unsimplified, of course. And then the next term is a multiplied by r twice, right? Because at this point, we would have multiplied by r and by r again. And I think you can start to see the pattern develop, right? And this is just going to go on and on and on and on. I'll do one more term here, the fourth degree term. And then we finally can see the pattern simply to be 2 multiplied by negative x over 2 to the nth power. Because after all, that is our formula. a times r to the n power. Maybe you remember that at this point. And it's certainly acceptable if you wanted to call this that particular series. Now, I'm going to go, go ahead and be a little bit more precise here and put a plus dot dot dot. The reason I want to do that is because I put an equal sign over here, which means that this should be an infinite series. Um, so I could do really one of two things here. Uh, the problem did not state that your series had to be in an open form. It just said find a power series. So what I've written would certainly suffice. If you want to simplify it, it would simplify to probably look something like this, 2 minus x plus, and by this time I have a 2 over a 4, which is going to be a 1 half x squared. And then I think I've got 2 over, mm, this is going to start to be a little tougher, I believe, uh, 4 to the 4th power. Not sure if I wanted to go there after all, now that I start to think about it. Um, actually, I'm, I'm at this term here first anyway, the, the, this one. Uh, let's go ahead and say 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. I'll call this uh, 1 4th x to the 3rd. And then I think by the time I get here, I'm going to have a plus 4. Uh, um, and, and I think I made a mistake here. That's why I'm kind of all flustered here. That should be a 2, right? This denominator of 2 should have never changed. 2 to the 4th is 16. I feel a lot better about this now. Hopefully you do too. So I apologize for that. So it's certainly acceptable to call this your power series. And of course, this would remain unchanged. But as I said before, this is the exact same thing as just simply using a summation. Remembering with your geometric series, we always start n equal to 0 if we use the a over 1 minus r format. And so this would be our a times our r to the nth power. And it turns out that this does indeed work out. A lot of, um, um, uh, of times it's nice to kind of verify and plug 0 in for n and make sure that you get 2 and then plug 1 in for n and make sure that you get negative 1x. And of course, we will in this case. So honestly, either of these would work to answer this part of the question find the power series. Now, it does ask to state the interval of convergence, which fortunately we don't have a lot to work on there. Because the interval of convergence, if you recall, is built upon the fact 
that your R value has to lie between negative 1 and positive 1. Now, another way to think about that, if you remember, is that the absolute value of R is less than 1. Maybe that might work a little better for you. I think with the students that I teach, we, we tend to like to leave the confines of the absolute value and think of it as strictly between negative 1 and 1. In that, that case, we just can say negative 1 is less than the R, which was negative X over 2, less than positive 1. And then at this point, if we multiply everything through by a 2, we get negative 2 is less than negative x is less than positive 2. And then if we multiply everything through by a negative, a couple of things are going to happen here. Well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, the 2 and the, and the, the negative 2 on the outsides are going to change their signs. And of course, whenever you multiply through inequalities by a negative sign, you have to flip the signs. Well, there's nothing really terribly wrong with that notation. It just looks weird. Typically, we use only less than symbols, and it's probably going to look best like this at that point. If any of you are wondering from before, do we need to check the endpoints? That is such a great question. Wonderful question. And the answer is no. Now, you can check the endpoints, but I promise you, if you were to check the endpoints into this particular function, into this power series for x equaling 2 or negative 2, you're going to get a big O diverge on both of them. In fact, we can probably tell really quickly if x is negative 2, then the negatives cancel. 2 over 2 is 1. 1 to the n is 1. And you're summing 2, which I think diverges. Same thing is going to happen if you plug in positive 2. You would basically get the alternating series 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and you cannot add that either. Why? Do we not even have to worry about checking the endpoints? Well, it all goes back to here where we know that the inequalities in either this expression or if you think of it with the absolute values is strictly less than. And so we never had a need to underline those inequalities. And so this would end up sufficing as the answer to this part of the question stating the interval of convergence. And generally speaking, you're going to handle all series that have this form. And you need to be on the lookout for this. If you have a series of the form, a constant over some kind of a binomial expression, power of uh, 1 for your x, this is the route that you're going to always take. Hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.